Kamala Harris may be a phenomenal debater and fantastic orator overall, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she's a good candidate, because the amount of times that she's flip-flopped on just one issue throughout the course of her campaign, it's baffling, like she's giving me whiplash. And you all know the issue I'm talking about, Medicare for All, because she just can't seem to make up her mind whether or not she does or doesn't want to get rid of private insurance companies. Now, if you'll recall, at the very first CNN town hall that she did, she said, yes, we should get rid of private insurance companies. Let's eliminate all of that. Let's move on. And less than 24 hours later, she walked back that claim once insurance companies threw a tantrum. However, at the first Democratic Party primary debate, when the candidates were asked whether or not they would abolish the private health insurance that millions of Americans currently have, she raised her hand, indicating again that she wants to get rid of private insurance, although less than 24 hours later, she once again walked back that claim. So once and for all, do you believe that private insurance should be eliminated in this country? No. You don't? No, I but do not. But you raised your hand last but night. But the question was, would you give up your private insurance? No, it wasn't. So do you understand? Flip flop, flip flop. I mean, if you want people to take you seriously, then you need to stop doing things like this and actually take a stand once and for all. And it seems like she's done that. But here's a problem with her and why this isn't a good look. If you're going to say that you support Medicare for All, but simultaneously you're co-sponsoring Bernie Sanders' bill, which does in fact effectively eliminate private insurance, then people think that you either A, are a bullshitter, or two, you don't know what's in the bill that you co-sponsored. Because Bernie Sanders' bill does just that. It's designed to get rid of private insurance. And that's a good thing, because we don't need them trying to water down our public healthcare system just so they can keep making profits. We don't need to carve out a space for them so they can continue to exist for purposes of ripping people off. We don't need to water down our own plans so they can exist. They need to go. We can kill off private insurance, because if we don't kill off them, they're going to kill off us. But see, the problem is Kamala Harris co-sponsored Bernie's Medicare for All bill. But, you know, you can't really communicate to private insurance companies that you're with them if you're supporting a bill that would essentially be a death sentence for them. So she realized that she's flip-flopped too many times and she needs to draw a line in the sand and do something drastic to communicate to them that she's with them. She's not with us. She's with the private insurance companies. So what did she decide to do? Well, she proposed a shittier version of Medicare for All that keeps private insurance companies. <laughs> That's just genuinely sad. <laughs> How embarrassing. How embarrassing. And one of the key differences is that instead of having a four-year rollout like Bernie Sanders' bill does, hers would have a 10-year rollout. Now, I need you to understand that the four-year rollout that Bernie Sanders has, that in and of itself is problematic. Like Pramila Jayapal's bill actually has a two-year rollout and Medicare for All experts and activists have has been saying, Bernie, you need to make your bill reach parity with Jayapal's because a two-year rollout is preferable. Um, and look, part of the reason I think why Bernie Sanders does have a four-year rollout is because he allowed Kirsten Gillibrand to write that portion. So maybe he let her write a shittier version just to get support for it. But if he actually becomes president, we need to ditch that and actually bring his bill to parity with Jayapal's and make it a two-year rollout. But I mean, that's beyond the point. Kamala is proposing a 10-year rollout, which gives private insurance companies, which she's leaving intact, ample time to completely water down her Medicare proposal. This is embarrassing. And furthermore, if Republicans wanted to, um, this wouldn't kick in until after she's out of office, assuming she serves two terms. So they can fully repeal this before it even goes into effect, before the American people know the benefits of this plan. This is just bad policy. This is embarrassing. It's clear that she doesn't actually care about the people. She cares about making sure that she appeases private health insurance companies. 
This is shameful. Now, for more on this plan, we go to Dan Diamond and Christopher Catalago of Politico, who write, Harris's new plan breaks with her rivals who occupy the opposite poles of the debate by effectively proposing Medicare Advantage for All, permitting private insurers to continue selling plans akin to the two-decade-old offshoot of Medicare, in addition to letting Americans immediately buy into the traditional Medicare program and adding new benefits like more mental health services. As a result, Americans would be able to choose between the public plan and certified private Medicare plans. Harris also said she would immediately enroll newborns and the uninsured an effort to quickly get to universal coverage if elected. Harris's 10-year timetable invites uncertainty, given that a term-limited Harris would be out of office and a future administration could reverse her plan. In her Medium post, Harris partially addressed the long-standing funding questions. She praised Sanders' financing suggestions for his Medicare for All proposal, saying he'd presented good options, particularly making the nation's highest earners and corporations pay more through more progressive income, payroll, and estate taxes. But she took aim at her rival's potential tax on households making more than $29,000 per year, saying it hits the middle class too hard and instead called to exempt households making less than $100,000, as well as some middle class families in high cost areas. So what she's doing here is she's now lying about the plan that she once supported because this doesn't hit middle class families too hard. I showed you the graph of data from Gerald Friedman that was presented by Andrea Witte of Connect the Dots USA. Even if we raise taxes, just eliminating that monthly health insurance premium, co-pays, deductibles, most Americans will save thousands of dollars per year. And furthermore, the reason why she can now exempt households making less than $100,000 per year is because she watered down Medicare for All to the point where less people need to pay for it. It's essentially being propped up in a way by private insurance companies. So this is basically a glorified public option. As the article put it, this is Medicare advantage for all. And a key to its success, as David Sirota points out, is it aims to expand Medicare advantage style plans run by for-profit insurance corporations. Now, some of the issues with these plans is one, they're accused of denying claims in order to boost profits. And they're also massively overbilling the government to the tune of billions of dollars. Now, the reason why these Medicare Advantage plans exist in the first place is because our current Medicare system, even if it's popular, it still has its issues. There are gaps in our existing Medicare program. But a key goal of Medicare for All is to improve Medicare for All before we expand it because it's not currently adequate enough to be expanded to everyone in its current form. But what it seems like Kamala Harris is trying to do is expand Medicare to everyone without improving it in order to let private health insurance companies come in and offer these Medicare Advantage programs to fill the gaps. I mean, this is absurd. She's literally watering down Medicare for all in order to preserve a role for private for-profit health insurance companies whose goal is not to take care of patients. It's to look out for their own profits. Now, as Dan Diamond puts it, the fact that her plan relies on Medicare Advantage will, in fact, open her up to criticism from progressives, but simultaneously, it's going to insulate her a little bit from criticism from Donald Trump because Trump's administration is also a huge champion of growing Medicare Advantage plans. Now, I don't even agree that this will insulate her too much from criticism from Donald Trump because Donald Trump will just lie about whatever plan she's saying or she's proposing and say, mine is better. Now, furthermore, this is just insulting. This is absolutely insulting because she's trying to convince everyone that keeping this for-profit middleman is actually better for everyone, that she is taking a plan that is best suited to get us to universal health care. And she's calling it Medicare for all and trying to convince us that it's in our best interest when really this is just a plan that's in the interest of of the private insurance companies. And she had the nerve to retweet this image from the SEIU where it says people over profit next to her image. No, you are literally putting profit over people here because you're going out of your way to create a pseudo Medicare for all bill at the behest of health insurance companies. It's disgusting. What a liar. This is what gaslighting looks like. She's saying, no, actually I am proposing my own Medicare for all plan, even if it's not really Medicare for all. It's a heavily watered down version of Medicare for all, but you're just expanding Medicare for all with the gaps that it currently have has. And you're saying, all right, for-profit companies, have at it. 
there's still going to be a role for you. This is just embarrassing and disgusting, quite frankly, because it shows that she is more worried about the profits of private health insurance companies and whatever scrutiny she may face from them and Donald Trump than she is about just constructing good public policy that would save lives. Embarrassing. The people are saying, we want Medicare for all, we want it to be free at the point of service, and we're perfectly fine if you get rid of our private health insurance, if that means we can still keep our doctor in hospitals. But because she's too afraid to speak truth to power and challenge the status quo, this is what we get. Some bullshit neoliberal plan that is basically a gift to the health insurance industry. If everyone is buying these Medicare Advantage plans, I mean, they're going to make a lot of money. These companies that offer Medicare Advantage are going to profit heavily from this. So this is not a plan that is in the interest of the people. This is not a politician who's looking out for the people. She's looking out for the profits of the health insurance companies. And maybe it's because she's corrupt. Maybe it's because she's just too afraid to stand up to them. Either way, it's despicable. Shame on you, Kamala.